Within this video, I'm going to show you how to paint metallic and reflective surfaces like this hammer. I chose a hammer because it's on the easier side, but you could use these techniques to paint anything that's made of metal, like cars, airplanes, basically whatever you'd like. And the best part about this is that it's a lot easier than you might think. The trick is about painting high contrast of values and placing them next to each other, which I'll talk about throughout this video. If you're going to paint along with me, up on the screen now is the reference photo that I took. Now this video is in 4K, so you should be able to pause the video here, take a screenshot, and there should be plenty of resolution. I also set up a version here with a grid, so you could use this to transfer over to your paper or to your canvas. If you're not familiar with using pencils and grids to transfer over your drawing, make sure you check out some of my older videos, like the one of Paint Your First Portrait and the one with the rose. The first part in both of those, I walk you through all the steps to show you how to use a grid. I'm not going to waste any time on this one going through the grid. You could, of course, trace it using a projector or a printer, whatever you want, just to get your contour lines onto your canvas. The first thing I'm doing here is placing a sheet of frisket film over the head of this hammer. From here, I'm using a number one or a number two X-Acto blade. Either one will work and I'm just cutting out the contours, meaning the outer outlines of it. Once this is cut out, I'm going to remove the center part, but I also want to save this because I'm going to be using it later, so don't throw that part away. For the head of this hammer, I'm only going to be using two transparent colors, both made by Createx Illustration Colors. The first color I'm using is called Payne's Gray. This is a classic color. I'm glad that Createx just released this one. It's kind of a, a bluish gray color. The other color I'm going to be using is black, so if you don't have Payne's Gray, you could use black for this whole painting. It'll work just as well. In my airbrush right now is Payne's Gray, diluted about 10% with distilled water, and I'm spraying at 20 PSI. Before we go any further, I want to say thank you so much to those of you who join this channel as members. So first, thank you to Andrew, M. Shibley, and Dwayne, all of which have been Tier 2 members for four months. And thank you to Robert, Periquiete Arts, and Ken for being Tier 1 members for one month. And of course, thank you to Pete at a Tier 2 membership for one month, and Alex at a very generous Tier 3. That's also very nice and incredibly kind of you guys, and it really means a lot to me, so thank you so much. So the first thing I'm doing here is spraying along the outer edges here. I really want this to have a dark outline around it. You'll see why that is later. So what I want to do is get a good amount of paint here, but I'm not just spraying it all at once. I'm basically laying some thin layers down, letting it dry for, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 seconds, and then adding some more, slowly darkening it up. This color is a transparent color, so we're going to adjust our values, meaning how dark and how light everything is, by how much paint we spray onto this canvas. I'm also adding some of this color to the lower part of this hammer head. This way we could erase into it and start building up our textures. I'm placing up the reference photo that I took on the lower left hand side of the screen now so you can see what we're working towards. The light source is hitting this hammer straight on so we're going to have our brightest areas right in the middle and then of course our darker areas are going to be off to the sides where the metal kind of folds away from us. So you can see that I darkened up some of the top up here and then also I added just a bit more paint down to the bottom right. The stainless steel of the hammer definitely has some brushing to it. Those are those thin vertical lines going up and down which are parallel to each other. So what I'm doing here is I'm using my eraser to start adding in some subtle lines. We're going to switch over to another tool later, an airbrush needle to scratch out much thinner, more precise lines. But for now, using this, we can just kind of map in where these brush strokes are. I'm going to speed through this because this part's really simple to do. All you want to do is try to add some vertical marks all across this side of the hammer. I'm not at all concerned about erasing into highlights or shadows here. I just want to put these textures down because we're going to be glazing paint over this later. So you're not really even going to see these. It's just going to help build up some texture for the next part. I'm going to zoom in here for this next part just so you can see what we're working on because this is that gap in the claw of the hammer. And what I want to do is fill this in extremely dark. So I'm using a shield here just to define that lower line. And you can see I'm kind of adjusting it and moving around, just spraying over the edge of it. This color is going to have to be much darker later on. We're going to switch to black for that. But for now, this Payne's Gray is going to work just fine to kind of get it in place. To paint in the other side, I'm doing the same thing. This time just flipping my shield the other way around and spraying over the edge. Another option you have here is you could use a piece of frisket, just place it on there, and then cut out that dark area, spray it on, and you'll get the same effect. For me, it's just easier to use a shield. If you look over at my reference photo, you'll see that there's a pretty dark shadow on the side here, so I'm using my shield just to spray that in, 
and the frisket is going to give me a sharp edge on the left side of it. I want to go around, start darkening up some areas here on the steel, and I'm just going to paint this in freehand because a lot of these transitions and gradients are very soft. The great thing about using an airbrush is that it's always going to give you a soft transition because it's atomizing and spraying paint. This is one of the main reasons I switched over to an airbrush from painting with oils. Now, something I said in the beginning of the video is the secret to painting metal is about having high contrast values right next to each other. You're going to have very dark darks right next to very bright highlights. Making something look bright or shiny in a painting is just an illusion. So what we're going to have to do is have these dark areas down first. So you can see I'm just kind of going around the edges, spraying some more paint here. Remember, transparent paint, the way you make it darker is you just spray more of it. Since this is the first pass, I want to add some of these little chips in the steel, almost like little rust marks. So I'm using a ripped piece of paper and I'm just spraying on the edge just to get some dark lines here in the claw of the hammer. Just like when we use the eraser for the brushing on the steel, this is just the first pass. So we're kind of just placing these in so we know where they are. A lot of them are going to get removed and scratched out when we switch over to the eraser, but it's a good idea to kind of put these in first so we have something to start building up our textures. The underside here is in shadow. It's kind of a cast shadow. So I'm just spraying freehand here, darkening up the lower side here. I'm not concerned if any of this overspray gets on the bright highlighted area because we're going to be erasing into that anyway. So the next thing I want to do is start adding some defined lines for these brush marks. The tool I'm using here is called an awl, which is spelled A-W-L. Generally, I like to use an airbrush needle for this. It works exactly the same. The only problem with an airbrush needle is that it's just so thin, it's kind of hard to, to grab and to hold on to. So this tool works just as well. If you have an old airbrush needle, you could use that instead. I prefer an airbrush needle or an awl for this rather than an X-Acto blade just because these lines get pulled out very thin. And I'm just going to work my way around this whole steel, just cutting into it, scratching out a bunch of vertical lines which are parallel to each other. I'm working here on smooth canvas that I prepared myself and of course I'm using Createx illustration colors. So this paint's a lot easier to scratch out. If you're using something like Golden, which is a phenomenal paint, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to pull that paint out because it dries much harder. At this point, I'm happy with what I have down, so I want to start darkening up some of these values a bit more. So the color of my airbrush now is black, and I diluted this about 10% with distilled water. And the first thing I'm doing here is, just like we did before, I'm going into the claw of the hammer, where this gap is, and I'm just spraying over again, darkening up the value in here. We'll do the same thing for the top line here. And then as I move over to the right where we have this small curve, you'll see what I do is I just take my airbrush shield and I kind of rotate it around to find one part of this shield that gets close to this curve and then I just spray it in. I usually spray a small amount of it, rotate the shield, move it around, and then spray a bit more. Like I said earlier, if you're uncomfortable with this, you could of course use some frisket film, just place it in there and cut it out and it'll give you a sharp line. On the edge here, we can see that there's a very thin dark line coming across. So I'm using my shield here and what I'm doing is I'm basically spraying on the shield and you can see when I remove this, we get a very thin line. This is probably the easiest way to paint thin lines. If you paint them in freehand, the, the problem with that is that it's just going to give you kind of a soft edge on it. We want a sharp edge here because this is a transition where the steel is basically being bent over in the other direction. What I want to do now is start darkening up these edges. Again, we're going to need high contrast to create that metal effect, that illusion that we're going after. So I'm just going around the edges here using my shield and some freehand, just spraying some of this black paint in to darken these up. While you're doing this, make sure you're looking at that reference photo on the lower left hand side of the screen. Take a look where you see really dark areas and where you see really light areas. This is basically black and white. It's kind of a grisaille just because, you know, it's steel. So it's easy to see the contrast in colors where areas are dark and where areas are very bright. And remember that it's always best to slowly build up to your darkest color. Don't go at it right away just because when the color is lighter and you make a mistake, it's just so much easier to erase out. So that's why I started with that Payne's Gray, just kind of mapped in where those dark shadows are. If anything was wrong, I could have erased into it. And then once I'm comfortable, I switched over to the darker color, which was black, and I sprayed a few more layers on it. So after I moved the frisket film, we could see that these effects are starting to come together. It's starting to look like steel, but we're going to have to push it much further. So the best tool for this is an eraser. So the one I'm using here is a Sun Dolphin electric eraser. And I like this one just because it comes with some very aggressive sand erasers with it. These do a great job at really scratching and removing the paint. So I'm starting on the left side here and I'm just kind of tapping it lightly onto the canvas. Remember, this is very aggressive, so you don't have to press hard on it. 
and the eraser is just going to kind of give some random scratches and remove some of the paint to give you a, a texture that looks a little bit more organic. It, it looks like steel. You know, it's not perfect. It's not perfectly erased. And in all of our paintings, that's what we want. We want randomness, especially to small areas like these bright highlights, these subtle textures in the steel. So just kind of tap this around. Don't press too hard on it and do the best you can to try to avoid a linear pattern. If you don't have an electric eraser, another great option is an ink eraser. You wanna make sure you have an aggressive one like this one made by Stadler. This is called the Razor. I'll have a link for these uh, down below in the video description. But this is gonna pull out paint just as well. You're gonna to have to use a bit more pressure here because these highlights are very bright. And when you're using your eraser, you may erase too much into that dark shadow as I did. So what I'm doing here is I'm just placing a part of this frisket back on and then spraying black right over it. This is gonna help create a transition at the top here and kind of blend in uh, the, the eraser marks with that dark shadow to make it look more natural. For me, using an airbrush is always about adding and subtracting, kind of repeating it over and over. So as I added that in, some of that overspray is going to get on that highlight that I just erased into. So I'm going to have to go back over it with the eraser to start erasing it out. But this is a good thing because it's going to help build up these textures, make it look like there's a lot more going on there and you spent a lot more work on it than you actually did. From here, what I'm doing is going around with my eraser, erasing some areas that need to be lighter. I'm constantly looking at my reference photo. This is my guide. As I say in all my videos, observation is the most important part to drawing or painting. So I'm looking at it and then looking at my painting and trying to spot the differences. If I notice an area is too dark on mine, it's no problem, I erase into it. And if an area is too light, same thing, we could switch over to the airbrush and lightly glaze a thin layer of paint over the top of it. One thing that I notice is that on the left side here on the claw, there are some chips in the steel, basically some very thin rust marks. So what I want to do to this is paint these in and I want them to be very sharp. So the tool I'm using for this is the skin texture template that I use in all my portrait paintings. And you can see I'm just kind of placing it on the edge here and then spraying that black paint right over it. I don't want to get carried away with this. I just want to copy what I see in the reference and just try to add a few of these in just to kind of break up some of that highlighted area where the steel is reflecting that light. I'm moving along here to the right side um, on this curve and I'm just spraying some more basically on that transition where that highlight is bending over into that very dark cast shadow that separates the side of the hammer from the bottom. For the right side of the hammer, I'm placing the frisket back on. Now, I know some people may wonder why I didn't just keep the frisket on the whole time. That's because when the frisket's on, I really can't see the values. It's very hard for me to tell what the edges look like and also what the highlights look like respective to those. So it's a good idea to save the frisket film. You'll see that I'll be cutting out pieces of it later to fit on. And uh, you know, it's just good to have there if you need to adjust something. So I'm going back to using Payne's Gray and I'm just concentrating on these dark shadows. You can see this one on the upper right is really dark. It's basically pure black. So I just wanna spray a good amount of this in to start mapping it in place. There's a transition on both of these shadows, the upper one and the lower one, that is very sharp where it transitions from that dark shadow to that bright highlight. Again, that's the effect we're going for. That's what's gonna make it look like a highly reflective surface like steel. And the tool I'm using for that is, you can see here a piece of paper or um, an airbrush shield, either one just to give you a sharp line there and a very sharp transition. Once I have those sharp lines painted in, I switch over to freehand just to fill in this area. I'm not really concerned if any overspray gets on some of those brighter areas because just like before, we're gonna switch over to an eraser next and erase into that. So if some paint gets on there, it's not a big deal. As we move along to the right, to the head of the hammer, you'll notice in the reference photo that there's a lot of small gradients and pretty sharp ones too of different values, basically from black to gray to a lighter gray and then to a pure white highlight. So what I'm doing with this is looking at my reference, letting it tell me what I need to paint in. And the first thing I see is this very dark shadow up on the right here, basically like a, a thin black line. So I painted that in with my shield and I'm using that dark value as a guide to understand or to know what color or what value the next layers need to be underneath it. You could see right underneath that dark black shadow is a gray one, which is definitely lighter than black. And then underneath that, we get that lighter gray area switching into pure white. 
The same thing goes for the lower side of this is a bunch of transitions and gradients of different values of gray. So I just started again with that darkest value and then worked my way up using that dark value to help guide me for the following or consecutive values. And these values, these very sharp transitions are something you're only going to see in reflective surfaces like metal, steel, anything like that. You're never going to see highly contrasted uh, brights and shadows in something like a portrait or, you know, anything organic, maybe like a piece of fruit or a tree. Those are always going to be subtle, soft transitions. The only time you're going to see very bright highlights on a portrait are generally going to be in the eyes because those are wet and they're going to reflect light very similar to the way metal would. Painting water or anything that's wet is actually very similar to painting metallic surfaces. It's just about those high contrast values next to each other. But that's something for different videos, so we'll talk about that in the future. So at this point, we have most of these darks and lights placed in for the right side of the hammer. Now what I want to do is get this frisket off so I could see what the values look like. Once we remove the frisket, we can see that the right side of the hammer and the left side have very different textures. The right side has what I'd call that airbrush look. Everything looks very soft. It doesn't have much texture to it. And to me, it doesn't look realistic. So of course, we're going to need to break up that softness. And the easiest tool for this is an eraser. So the one I'm using here is just another ink eraser. You know, it's more aggressive than a traditional pencil or graphite eraser. And I'm just starting with this really bright highlight in the middle, which is a specular highlight. A specular highlight is a highlight that's directly reflecting the light source. So it's generally almost going to be pure white. And just like before, I'm going around this constantly looking at my reference photo, which is my guide. And I'm just erasing out any area that looks too dark or looks too soft for me. The eraser is just going to help break that up and lighten the area. At this point, you can see that the hammer is starting to come together. We're really starting to get that effect that looks like metal, looks like steel. You know, just like I was saying, I'm going around each area. I noticed that this area right in the center here is still too dark, so I'm lightening it up. And then on the right side here, adding some texture with that electric eraser. If I wanted, I could have stopped at this point and this will be fine. You know, it just looks like a hammer, but the problem is it kind of just looks like it's floating there. There's nothing behind it. So what I want to do is add a cast shadow. So it looks like it's casting a shadow on the desk that it's sitting on. The light source here is basically straight on, but it's a little bit higher. It's a little bit above the hammer. So we're getting a subtle cast shadow just to the bottom. You can see on the left side here on the claw and on the right on the head of the hammer here, we're getting a very soft shadow underneath it. So in the beginning of this video where we cut out the head of this hammer, I said to keep that center part. And that's what we're going to use here. You can see that I just cut the right side of it just to place on the right side here of this hammer. Sometimes it's hard to take a piece of frisket and line it up perfectly, you know, the way it was originally. So that's why I just cut a piece of this and just lined it up to the bottom here so that I could start spraying the shadow in. Now the color I'm using for this is again Payne's Gray, and I'm just going to paint this in freehand. The shadow is going to be slightly darker toward the top, and then slightly lighter toward the bottom. And of course, because this Payne's Gray is a dark, transparent color, we adjust our values by how much paint we spray. So where I want it darker toward the top and toward the middle, spraying more paint. And then as it fades away and kind of gets soft onto the desk itself, I just let the overspray kind of dust on there to give a very soft transition. If you add enough layers of Payne's Gray, it's basically going to look pure black. But the nice thing about using color like this is that it's more forgiving because it takes more layers to get darker. So it's kind of hard to accidentally spray too much like you can if you were using pure black. After I remove the frisket, this looks pretty good to me. But one thing I'm noticing is this highlight, which is reflecting the table, uh, just still looks a little too bright for me. So I'm just using the airbrush freehand lightly glazing a thin layer of this transparent paint over it to darken it up. You can see once that's in, that looks more natural. Let's do the same thing to the left side. You can see that I just used that cutout from the center of the frisket, just cut out the right side of it and lined up the left side here. So it lines up with the lower part of this claw of the hammer. When I spray the paint on, the paint's gray. You can see we get a nice soft cast shadow at the bottom here. And at this point, we're basically done. The hammer looks like it's sitting on the table. We have a subtle cast shadow. I'm just going to go around it, and if I see any areas that are too light, I'm just going to spray some more paint on there. You can see I added some texture over to the right here um, on the head of the hammer, just to make it look uh, like what we did on the left side on the claw of the hammer. Basically just going around and adjusting anything that needs to be changed. This is kind of the fun part of a painting, you know, just kind of cleaning everything up. The main thing I notice now is this bright highlight right in the center is still too dark. I really want that bright so it looks like it's reflecting light. 
Remember, for this metal effect, this reflective effect, we're going to need very high contrast. So in that middle, I'm just coming around with my eraser and pulling out some more paint. I also noticed a very thin highlight on the left side here, so I'm using an X-Acto blade to scratch that out. And at this point, we're done. You could see here in the final painting, this looks pretty realistic. It looks like metal, and again, it's not that difficult to do. You just have to get those darks as dark as you can, and you have to put them right next to those very bright highlights. All painting ever is is an illusion, so you just have to study your references and understand what you're looking at and do the best you can to translate that using paint and some erasers onto your canvas. Now this video was just about painting metal, but I know some of you may want to finish this and paint the handle, paint this wood, so I'm going to go over this very quickly. Just understand that this really wasn't part of this lesson or this video. I'm just going to give you some information about what I did if you want to finish this. So the first thing I did was mask off the edges using some 3M vinyl tape. I really love this stuff if you want some straight lines that have some subtle curves in it like the handle of this hammer. For the wood grain, I'm using a mixture of half burnt umber and half sepia. Mix them together and dilute it about 10% with distilled water. And then I'm just using this ripped piece of paper to spray in some of these thin lines. And this is going to give us a wood grain texture when we start glazing some paint over the top of it and then eventually erasing into it. Since the light source is straight on, the brighter areas are going to be in the middle, so I'm using the same color to darken up the edges, spraying more paint toward the left, to the right, and also at the very top where the head of the hammer is casting a subtle shadow on this. From here, I'm going to switch over to an ink eraser and erase in between these lines that I put down. This is going to scratch it up and just give some texture there. It's going to help make it look like a wood grain. Now, to be honest, I really didn't spend that much time painting the wood handle here. This is about five minutes in, but you can see just using a few of these techniques, you know, rip piece of paper and the right color with an eraser, you get a, a texture that kind of looks like wood. And just like painting the metal, it's all about adding paint and removing it. So every single time I add a glaze of paint on, I switch back over to the eraser, scratch some out. And of course, repeat the same process, add some more paint and just repeating that over and over. It's going to give you a lot of texture. It's going to make it look more natural. And one thing I forgot to mention is that I use some frisket along the top just to get that transition where the hammer meets the, the wood handle. And once I remove the masking tape, you can see that this looks pretty good. It needs some adjustments. One thing that looks wrong to me right now as I'm going around cleaning this up is that transition of the steel to the wood. That line is too sharp. The light source is straight on, but slightly higher, so there should be a very subtle cast shadow. In the reference photo, you can see that there's some glue there. I'm not going to paint that. If I was spending more time on this, I definitely would. But I'm just going to add a subtle cast shadow in here using some sepia and just lightly spray it along this edge. The steel has a very straight line at the bottom of it, so I'm just using a straight piece of paper, spraying this in. And just like before, when we painted that shadow underneath the, uh, the hammer itself, I'm just kind of spraying on the paper, letting some of that overspray give us a gradient dark on top and then lighter on the bottom. And you can see when that's painted in, it just kind of pulls it together, makes it look like they're connected. So that's going to complete this painting lesson. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. The best thing about this is you can get a pretty realistic looking still life that's not that difficult to paint. If you're interested in painting like this and you feel nervous that you can't do it, don't worry about it. You got to just kind of jump in and don't worry about making those mistakes because mistakes are always going to help you out in the long run. And each painting, you're going to get better and better. I wish all of you the very best in your painting. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you back here next week.